What do you want, Coda? Yagami-san, we're fine. There's a lot we don't understand, so we just feel a bit vulnerable right now. But, um, well, if you learn more about Sawa-sensei, could you please keep us in the loop, too? Oh, please, bitch! What's with this goody-two-shoes bullshit? Fucking chill, Akane. What's your problem? Like I said before, I'm a detective, and I'm looking into Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. That's why I was talking to Sawa-sensei. It's highly likely she got wrapped up in that case. So make no mistake, I'm going to find the truth about what happened to them both. <laughs> Kinda pointless. The internet's already branded Mikoshiba-sensei as the villain in all this. Everyone says he had it coming since he used to be a bully himself. Yeah, I know. Anyway, if you're interested in hearing my report, just drop me a line. Maybe seeing my work might put things into perspective for you. <laughs> Detective my ass. Just get out of my face! So, about Akane, she was really into Mikoshiba-sensei. They got along great, chatted all the time. Then all of a sudden, he just disappeared. She thought they had a connection, but turns out it was only one way. Now, she's always so pissed off. Keeps driving herself over the edge because she can't even reach the brakes. <sighs> I'm not saying all this because I expect you to forgive us. The fact that you recognize you did some awful things is a step in the right direction, at least. I'm sorry, Coda. For everything we did to you. You can't expect her to ever forgive you. If anything, expect that she never will. <sighs> I know. That said, good job apologizing. <sighs> Thanks. Yep. It's cool. I should head back to Yokohama so we can hammer out our strategy. Yup. So many strategies. Do I have a taxi over there? I have a taxi over here. Let's go take a taxi. Much easier. our way on hind taxi now let's see what will be next oh the dog is also here I don't want to speak with a dog hey welcome back talk good to see you Yagamishi how things go at school the chairman told the entire student body about Sawa-sensei at an assembly. Everyone's pretty shaken up. Yeah. 
I can't even imagine. We've been waiting for you, Yagamishi. Let's plan our next moves. Are you ready? Okay, yes. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what's next for us. While in a meeting yesterday, Sawa-sensei received a call that her apartment was broken into, prompting her to go home. Judging from the events that followed, RK must have called her using the apartment manager's name. And that's how they got to Sawa-sensei. But RK wasn't after Sawa-sensei. They were actually after Kuwana, weren't they? Yeah. Akutsu and Soma both said so. I think Sawa-sensei was used to lure Kuwana out. Why would Sawa-sensei be bait to draw out Kuwana? How the hell are those two connected? That too, but why is RK even after Kuwana-san? Thugs from Kamurocho want a handyman in Ichincho? <laughs> right. There's still a lot we don't know. Yes. We need to find Kuwana before RK does and get some answers out of him. Kuwana isn't even his real name. Apparently it's Kitakata. RK didn't seem to be familiar with the name Kuwana. Truth is, we don't know anything about Kuwana. All we know is that he's a handyman in Ijinsho. I haven't been able to contact Kuwana-san since yesterday, but I left a message asking him to reply. Where's the office for his handyman business? He ran his whole operation from a cell phone. Not even his business card lists and address. Oh yeah, Kaito-san. Didn't you call up all the places we went drinking? Did you find out where he lives? Yep, just found out. Looks like Kuwana lives in some kind of prefab shack off West Central Street. This sounds like pretty shitty conditions for a guy charging up the ass for his time. Well, if we know that much, we might as well go take a look. Huh. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Tsukumo, we'll talk more later. <laughs> you never slow down, Yagamishi. Okay, already going. Head what to Kuwama's it? house. And that will be right over there. It's not that far. Let's just run. Kuwana's place? Yeah, I think so. Guess it's kind of fitting for an unlicensed handyman. Oh. Huh? What is it? The door's been forced open. Maybe with a crowbar or something. If anyone was in here before us, it had to have been RK. Aside from us, they're the only ones after him. Hmm. Let's see, what do we have inside? That means they're already a few steps ahead of us. Our K's got the numbers behind them. We can't be... Just, just a second, I'll be back in a few minutes.
I'm back. Get him to the punch every time. I don't think Juan has been back since last night. You probably caught on that he's a wanted man. He might not even be in Ijin Cho anymore. Then what do we do here? His real name's supposedly Kitakata. I want to know who he really is and why he used a fake name. That'll make his connection to Sawa-sensei clearer. So you want to find clues that point to his true identity? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, Kaito-san. And let's do that. Hey. Magazines scattered all over the place. What the? Leftovers from a ramen cup. Would it have killed him to clean up a bit? Yeah. I'm starting to think this place was a dump even before it got ransacked. Hey. This area was probably a mess long before RK even showed up. Suspicious. Definitely. If a sofa like this was in my office, I never want to get any work done. No. Suspicious. So many buckets, what does he use them all for? I guess being a handyman is no picnic. Hey. Have junk will travel is that the usual handyman Go work. On, I his ties to the underground. But I get the feeling this kind of work was his bread and butter. Collecting junk, walking pets, fixing pipes, taking any odd job that comes his way. Not so different from us. A handyman, a detective, it's two sides of the same coin. Okay, I think that's all here. Let's move forward. Suspicious. An unfinished cup of sake. Why'd he leave so much in there? Probably wouldn't have splattered everywhere during the ransacking if he just finished it. Doc, the floor is still soaked over here. Really? Then it hasn't been long since that sake got knocked over. Yeah. If they were the ones here before us, then we must have barely missed them. Uh-huh. Books. What the... Everything came off this shelf when he came down, likely from RK ransacking the place. They made one hell of a mess in here. Bet they had no clue what they were doing. Looks like they just wanted to trash the place. Yep, pretty much screams RK. Nothing more than a bunch of punks. Suspicious cigarettes. Are these Kiwanas? I don't think so. Pretty sure he's been vaping. But maybe yeah. he craved the real deal every now and then. Yeah, people do smoke both depending on the situation. Wanna sit, so where the hell is he anyway? What the? Suspicious. Is this a computer power cable? There's a mouse here too. There was a laptop here. RK must have taken it. There's probably a treasure trove of info on it. <sighs> and RK's got anything of value out of this place already. Come on, don't be emo. <clears throat> Suspicious. An ashtray. Huh. That's weird. What? 
With all the gross garbage in here, this ashtray is oddly empty. Think so? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's clean and all, but so what? Could just be freshly empty. Except it hasn't been washed or even used in a while. See the layer of dust on it? Okay, and? You think a dusty ashtray is gonna get us Kuwana's identity? Maybe. Or maybe it's nothing. Am I wrong to press on with this? No, anything suspicious is worth investigating. We scanned the place, but we were too late. Where else can we go to learn more about Kuwana? hold up, Ta. We don't have enough on Kuwana to go after him. Sure you want to go back empty-handed? I feel like I checked everything worth looking at. Well, maybe there's more to something you looked at already. Besides, where else are we gonna find dirt on Kuwana if we leave? More to something I looked at already? Was there anything like that in here? Yeah, we can just leave a stove that matches this office interior surprisingly well. Nothing else special about it. Suspicious. That's a huge printer, another tool of the handyman trade, I guess. Uh -huh. Let's get closer here. I can't go any closer. It looks like yep, nothing more. Hmm. Hey, these nothing. cigarettes. There's something about them. Kawana usually smokes e-cigarettes. The ashtray looks virtually unused. What are you getting at? I don't think Kawana's smoking these cigarettes. Then why keep what you don't smoke? See? You gotta be more thorough. lighter what now whoa okay USB we have a memory it. stick disguised as a lighter damn did you just hit the jackpot or what that has to be important if kuwana was hiding it like this what matters is the data on it we'd be able to check it now if we had a computer then why don't we head back to tsukumo's thank god we found something i've had it with this place we should get out of here Okay, now let's see. Let's head out and what's going to be next? Oh, it's it already dark. night. Huh? What's the matter, Tuck? Looks like a meet and greet. Oh, yeah? Oh, think they're RK? Well, they're the only ones looking for Kuwana other than us, right? Don't see Soma or Akutsu, though. So, he sent the fucking B team. Probably for the best. If Soma was here, I don't think I could stay cool. Poor girl. Yeah, me neither. Which one of you is gonna talk? Where are Soma and Akutsu? There's no point in talking to a dead man. Uh-huh. Well, if that's how you're gonna play it, then we're not holding back either.
I didn't like this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I told you I learned new skills. Where are Soma and Akatsu? I want to talk to them. We can't contact them, I swear. They're the ones who contact us. It's always been like that. Uh, figured as much. <sighs> Most of the arcade crew are just chumps. Yeah. I bet even Soma is just another piece on the board, taking orders from the real mastermind. Thugs don't work gigs that don't pay. Yet they came to Ijinshu, outside their turf, to commit murder. That's true. Sounds like someone's funding them. There must be some generous perks. Definitely. Otherwise, Soma and the others wouldn't be causing so much chaos over here. Then, who's the one pulling RK's strings? I don't know who it is, but I know what he's trying to do. Which is? Catch Kuwana. RK's just following orders. And Sawa-sensei was probably collateral damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Shit. I swear I'm gonna drag this bastard out on his ass! If we keep looking for Kiwana, we'll run into the one behind this all eventually. And this could be our first clue. Then we'd better get back to Tsukumo's. What's going on out here? Are you friends of kiwana sons? Uh, yeah, we are. And those gentlemen on the ground? Those guys. Oh, yeah, they're just wasted. Little nap and they'll head right on home. Ah, I see. <laughs> well, that's just fine. Excuse me, but you know Kiwana, don't you? Sure. I mean, he's lived next door for the last ten years. But he's ten handy. Year. Ten years. Any time we were short-handed, he'd come by and help us out. We'd pay him with our daily special. This man and his wife are Kuwana's next door neighbors. Oh, I haven't heard from Kuwana since last night. But do you happen to know any places he visits often? Let's see. He has an uncle that took him in when he first came to Yokohama. Called him a distant relative or something. He's an ex-Yakuza running a bar since he got out of the game. Apparently, this uncle is how he started getting gigs around town. What did Kuwana do before he became a handyman? Hmm? Beats me. Uh, maybe some kind of corporate job? I don't think I've ever asked. Where can we find Kuana's uncle's bar? Oh, the bar's called Siren. It's over in Chinatown. I've been there two or three times myself. The owner is a real nice guy. Hard to tell he was ever a Yakuza. Then we better get over there, too. Can't afford to fall behind RK again. Let's hurry. Thanks for everything. And sorry for bothering. Oh, don't mention it. Oh, that's up there. In Chinatown. Oh, and we have a taxi right here. For our road to Chinatown. is more Sorry. important. This is it, Tuck. This is the bar Kuwana's relative runs. A 
Hello? Anybody here? This place empty too? It's definitely messy in here, but it wasn't exactly ransacked. Yeah, more like someone had to skip town in a hurry. Did the owner already make a break for it then? Be smart if he did. What with RK about to come hunt down Kuwana and all. What's going on here? Where's the owner? Let's roll, talk. Hmm. Hey, uh, the name of this place was Siren, wasn't it? Huh? Yeah. Oh, look who's here. Hope he doesn't kill. Hi, you've reached Siren? <laughs> Soma, that was well played. How silly of me. This pretty little thing is for women. <gasps> oh. Have I told you what RK stands for yet? <laughs> It's red knife. You son of a Soma! The owner must have smelled trouble coming. He took off before I could find him. Tell me. Why did you kill Sawa Sensei? Uh, I'm afraid she knew too much. And that's all. And that's all. You're in the same boat. We can't afford to ignore you anymore. You already made a mistake. You didn't kill me when you could have. I'll own up to that. Akutsu wasn't equipped to handle the task. Well then, now you pay the price for it. Will I? Kaito's down and you're by yourself. Should be easy. I don't think so. I don't think so, my friend. Not going to be easy for you. You're done, my friend. That doesn't work with me. Should have prioritized stabbing you over Kaito. Uh, 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 fuck. You're kind of struggling to stand, aren't you? Give it a second. <sighs> that kick went to your temple. I'm sure your head is spinning. Trying to rush it will only make it worse. Incidentally, Sawa Sensei didn't suffer long like you will. What the hell?
Whoever that is has terrible timing. What the hell are you doing in my bar? Hello? Is this the owner? Yes. Kuanakun warned me you'd show up. I decided I'd get out of there before you did. Don't expect that I'll ever come back either. All I wanted with Guanasan was to have a little chat. No need to go running for your lives now. <laughs> Spare me the lies. I already know you broke into a young woman's home and killed her. Come on. You wouldn't even hesitate on an old man in his 70s. Pass the phone to Yagami-san, please. Otherwise, I'm calling the cops over there. What could you possibly want with him? Quit stalling and give him the phone. Unless you'd rather I push a button and call the cops. I'm done talking to you. The owner of the bar would like a word with you. Okay, now let's see. Sorry, but this will have to wait. Can you get an ambulance over to your bar right away? My partner took a knife to his abdomen. What? Please, you have to hurry. Oh, 20k SP. Hello? Your partner is in good hands now. Just as you asked. I'm watching you as we speak. Oh, and don't bother looking for me. I won't be meeting you there. Instead, there's a karaoke bar called Survive. Heard of it? You'll find it in the entertainment district along the river. Safest bar in town. I only showed up at your bar so I could ask you about Kiwana. Does this mean you want something in return? We'll get that sorted out. If you promise to meet me alone. No, I won't be at Survive for long. If you don't make it in ten minutes, you'll never hear from me again. That's one way to motivate someone. <laughs> Clock's ticking, by the way. So, survive in the entertainment district? Correct. See you soon. It better be. Apologies for the wait. Let's go. What? That was a cop? Oh, no, it was a taxi driver. Oh, and chapter 8 is done. Kawana is pursued by RK. The crime In this game, the chapters are Joe. not so long like the first game. Determined to prevent any more deaths, Yagami searches high and low for the handyman. But the search leads to a maze of dead ends. As the situation becomes dire, a lifeline appears at the other end of a phone. The caller offers a lead, one that expires too quick for comfort. Chapter 9 The Weight of Guilt. I only showed up at your bar so I could ask you about Kawana. Does this mean you want something in return? We'll get that sorted out. If you promise to meet me alone. No, I won't be at Survive for long. If you don't make it in ten minutes, you'll never hear from me again. Okay, now let's run. Survive is in the entertainment district by the river. I have to hurry. All the way there. And I think I have a taxi. In the entertainment district, there's not such a
Bar District. Survive Bar. Yagami-san, glad you could make it. You're the owner of Siren? Yeah. Let's take this to the bar. Follow me. So, I hear you're a Kamurocho detective. Yeah, and you're a distant relative of Kuana's. Can I ask your name? No need. This will be the only time we meet. But to Kuana-kun, I guess you'd call me his uncle-in-law. <laughs> Everyone's got a dumbass uncle in the family. And that's me. After all, I'm ex-Yakuza. Based in Yokohama? Yeah, the Seriyu clan. After I got out, I looked after the shop for 20 years, till today. You mean Siren, right? What'll happen to it once you've skipped town? <laughs> None of your concern. Fair enough. <laughs> Guess you detective types can't help but ask questions. So you two are related. I noticed you didn't mention Kiwana being an alias. Hmm. Oh. Done your homework, I see. Now that the Kuwama secret's out in the open, where should I lead the conversation next? His real name is Kitakata. His real name's Kitakata. At least, that's what the Kamurocho thugs call him. You're trying to see if I'll give up his name. That's not why I'm here. Okay. Why did you call me exactly? Well, you see, Kuanakun wanted me to stop by his office and grab something for him. Such as? A pack of cigarettes with a lighter inside. Thing is, it was gone by the time I got there. Don't you mean a USB stick made to look like a lighter? Let's not beat around the bush here. Say, I figured you'd grabbed it. So of all things, Kawana wanted you to pick this up? Yes. And he prefers to keep that content private. So, if you could just hand that over. Now I'm curious. Care to tell me what's on here? Would you hand it over if I did? No. I'd still need to confirm you told the truth. Can't you tell Kawana Kun's backed into a corner here? Asking an old man to help was his only choice. Let's be honest. I couldn't take that thing from you if I wanted to. All I can do is appeal to your sense of decency. Well, I've gotta say, that's more persuasive than threats ever would be. But if you really want me to give this up, at least let me see Kawana. I'd consider that, but he's already long gone. He was ready to cut out at the drop of a hat. So, Kuwana's prepared to disappear at any time. In that case, I definitely can hand over this data. If that's the case, unfortunately, I'll need to hold on to this. A high school teacher was killed by the thugs that went after Kuwana. Her name was Yokosawa, a young woman dedicated to her career. <sighs> I'd met her while investigating the murder of a student teacher. But while trying to get her side of the story, I ended up running into Kawana outside her apartment. Do you know anything about this woman? I don't. You're really drawing a blank? You don't know anything about criminals coming all the way from Kamrocho just to get a Kawana? Do you at least know how they're connected to Sawa Sensei? Again, that's a negative. And this flash drive's my only concrete lead? <sighs> If it's so important to Kuana, he should have come himself. 
rather than send a middleman. <sighs> Don't be so hard on him. I'm the one who taught him all his tricks. Are you saying Kiwana's ex Yakuza too? Nah. He was just your average civvy before all this. But circumstances as they were, he had no choice but to go underground. That's when he came to a gene show and I took him under my wing. I'm the one who suggested the handyman thing. But he took to the underground with real gusto. What do you mean, gusto? I'm not just talking him up. He had good reasons for diving headlong into the shadows. Good reasons? Care to give me one or two? <sighs> You'll understand once you see what's on the lighter. Both Kuanakun's past and his purpose. That takes care of everything I have to say. Not sure it's such a good idea for me to just let you leave. Thinking about stopping me? Wouldn't be wise. This joint doesn't take kindly to that behavior. That's why this is the safest place in Ijinsha, huh? Yep. Mm. And I'm glad your face is the last one I'll see in this city. I can learn more about Kuwana with this the flash drive. Skumo should be able to check for encryption. Okay, let's go back. That's the closest. Yagami. Oh, great. It's Claw Guy. You were with the Luma, right? They say you brought your little posse from Tokyo. You want to trust an outsider? Posse? Wait, don't tell me you think I'm RK. They're not even close to me. <clears throat> hey, Tesso, you got this all wrong. Oh, and there are more. Go there! 
You're all done. Man, who paid you to jump me this time? These Kamrucho douchebags show up, strutting around like they own our city. Then I hear some teacher chick gets killed after a break in. Fuckers. Someone let him into Ijincho, right? Right? Look, I can see why you're pissed. But you figured coming after me was the answer? Figured I could at least try beating a few out of you. Office visits ain't my style. You've got to appreciate that not everyone plays by gang rules, man. What I don't appreciate is Kamurocho trash. Now why are they here, Yagami? I'd like to find that out myself. But I'll tell you this much. I'm not your enemy. I was first on the scene of that murder. I knew the woman personally. The culprit is RK's leader, a guy named Soma. Shit. You serious? And why is the rest of his crew here with him? A lot of muscle just to ice one lady. They're after a local handyman, Kawana. You know him? Yeah, matter of fact, I do. Why they want him so bad. I'm looking into that now. Which is why they're still after me. Not to mention they stabbed my partner. So the more you get in our way, the slower this'll go. Mm. Gotcha. You understand then? How's about I make you the deal of a lifetime? Uh... So long as RK's messing around in my city. I don't mind calling you a brother. Okay. Really? Just we have like friends. Sure. We have friends. But I get to be Aniki, of course. You really think this is selling it? What you're missing here is the Leomong never target a brother. So now, if anyone lays a finger on you, the Leomong's taking their head. Same rule for all the ladies here in Ijincho. Anyone gets fresh, they become fresh meat. With me on that, brother? Oh, this is gonna take some getting used to. Besides, making you a brother is the only way we save face for getting our asses handed to us, you know? Ah, uh, now the truth comes out. Anyway, let me know if you get any intel on RK. Especially where that chicken shit Soma might be. Just shoot me a location and it's done. We'll give that teacher her peace by torturing me to death. Hey, I guess I've got some pretty heavy hitters on my side now. Hey, that's good. That's good for business. I was just thinking of calling you, Yagamishi. I heard Kaito-san got stabbed at Siren. Is that true, Yagami-san? What the hell happened? Look, I promise I'll fill you in, but right now I really need Tsukumo's help. With what? I found a USB drive at Kawanda's hideout. It was disguised to look like a lighter. We have to know what's on it. So... Kaito-san was attacked by that Soma guy, too. 
Yeah, while we were chasing Kiwana, Soma popped up and got him right in the gut. Almost got me too, to be honest. You're saying one guy almost single-handedly took down the Yagami Detective Agency? That's true. And right after, I got a call from Kiwana's purported relative, who wanted me to hand over the flash drive. Apparently, what's on it will tell us Kiwana's true identity and goal. When I open it, all I see is one data file. Of what? It's a video. I'll hit play once you guys are all ready. You good? Damn, what's on there? I can't take the suspense. Kuwana went a great lengths to keep this video secret. What are we about to see? Let's make it full screen. Full screen ahead. Quit being a little bitch. I told you to take it in the face. Right, let's do it over again, okay? Suzuki, make sure you're getting this. Suzuki. Yeah, I'm gonna really fucking nail him this time. Mayo. Ready when you are. Okay. Get your ass back. Mitsuru, what did I just say about being a bitch? You asked for it. I'm gonna have to punish ya. Punishment! Punishment! Let's hear the punishment song, everybody! Punishment! Punishment! Get ready for Mitsuru Kun Stop! You little shit, did you just kick me? Huh? Too late to get tough now, Mitsuru. Show us what you got. We want to see. We gotta get this all on camera. Oh, isn't this just the most pathetic sight? Oh shit, he's pissing himself. Ew, that's so nasty. <laughs> Man, these kids. <laughs> and I think things like this really happens in real life. These little shits are the worst. One of them said something about Mitsuru Kusumoto stripping? Yeah, he was Sawa Sensei's classmate. Thirteen years ago, he jumped off the roof of Kurokawa Academy. He's Reiko Kusumoto's son, right? Vice Minister of the Health Ministry? Thirty years old and still in a coma. It seems we've stumbled on private video footage of Mitsuru Kusumoto being bullied. And it was on Kuwana-san's secret flash drive? Why would he have this? I don't know. But his uncle said it's our lead to Kuwana's real identity and motivation. Hmm. Huh. Uh, just a moment. This frame gives us a good look at the key players' faces. Why don't we try gleaning what we can from it? Sounds good. Let's dig in. Hopefully we can find what we need in this video. Seems likely considering it was hidden and sought after. Let's check everything. <laughs> Must be the date in school year terms. They probably just finished summer September break. September 17th, 13 years ago. It's past 4 p.m. so this would be after school. Yep. Oh. Wait, this is... Got something? I just cross-referenced the date Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped. September 17th. Oh shit. That can only mean this video was recorded very shortly before his suicide attempt. So this video captures the crucial instance of bullying that drove Mitsuru Kusumoto to attempt suicide. Oh man.
suspicious. This bigger guy is acting like the the main bully. I've seen this face before. If I'm not mistaken, Shinya Kawai was the bully whose name got out to the public. Yeah. RK was hunting for him in Kamrocho pretty recently, too. I have no doubt the guy in the picture they showed me is the same guy in this video. Once RK came to the conclusion Kawai had been murdered, they came here to be Jincho, hunting down Kawana for whatever reason. Did Sawa Sensei get mixed up in all this because of Kawai's case? No, I can't see a connection there yet. Uh huh? This girl recording the bullying on her cell phone. Someone said her name in the video. Suzuki. There's another familiar face. So it all comes circling back to her, huh? Right. This Suzuki girl has a different name now. Suzuki is just her middle name. 13 years later, her name changed to... Yui Mamiya. Yui Mamiya. The victim in the Ahara harassment case. Suzuki was her last name before getting married. Sawa-sensei also told me that Mitsuru Kusumoto and Mamiya were classmates 13 years ago. Yep. So we're looking at Yui Mamiya in high school. Mamiya-san, huh? What's she like underneath it all? Originally, word got around that Shinya Kawai was the one bullying Mitsuru Kusumoto. After watching this, though, the truth of the matter doesn't quite line up. There were really about 10 bullies involved at the time, and Yui Mamiya was one of them. Yeah. If this video got leaked, Mamiya and the other students in it would be in deep shit. They're living out their lives like nothing happened, despite being the ones who drove a kid into a coma. If word got out, they'd be crucified by the public. Their jobs, their families, their lives would all change for the worse. Hmm. Hey. Suspicious. This guy's face is familiar somehow. Oh, uh, I don't think I've seen him. Uh, the one I from the bridge. Who is he? I think I remember him. From the bridge, yeah. I this saw one. him at the crime scene where Mikoshiba's body was. He was with more Kurakawa grads. He showed his ID to the Kanagawa detective. I think his name was Akaike. That gives us an interesting perspective, doesn't it? All the people in this bullying video seem to keep popping up around our case. Yeah, but the real question is, why was Kawana the one with the video? What the? Despite jumping off his school roof 13 years ago, Mitsuru Kusumoto still clinging to life. I feel bad for Mitsuru-kun. No one helped him, even with everything he was going through. Thirteen years ago, his mother was still just some nobody working at the Ministry of Health. She seems to have split with her husband and looks after her son on her own now. I don't know all the details, though. Hey, crazy theory, but what if this husband she left was actually Kuwana-san? And maybe he recorded this to secretly check on his son? No, Kuwana doesn't look like he could have a 30-year-old kid. Let's look for other possibilities. Uh-huh. Okay, I think we are done here. Yeah. Hmm. The video may have provided some interesting connections, but we still don't have that crucial link. The link being the reason Kawana-san came to possess this, of course. Right. Kawana's either the one who recorded it himself, or is at least a recipient of the video, from the original witness. Kuwana-san and Sawa-sensei knew each other somehow, right? Well then, maybe Sawa-sensei recorded it 13 years ago, and then had Kuwana-san look into it. As one of his handyman requests. It's possible, but it just feels off. Why's that? Because of what Siren's owner said to me. Okay. You'll understand once you see what's on the lighter. Both Kuwana-kun's past and his purpose. He said we'll know Kuwana's true identity once we watch the video. But that hasn't been the case so far. 
Yeah. Uh, what identity could we draw from a secret recording of some bullies? Assuming Kuan is in his early 40s, he would have been about 30, 13 years ago. What if he was a school teacher of the students in the video? In that case, we should consult the yearbook Segura she brought back. The one that was in Sawa Sensei's room? You still have yet to look through it. That's right. But let me go get it. The way you're talking, I assume you've already taken a peek? We have. But unfortunately, we didn't find Kawana-san's face among the teachers. This is the page for Mitsuru Kusumoto's class. Both Sawa-sensei and Mami are there too. So the homeroom teacher was... this guy. Apparently he witnessed bullies harassing Mitsuru multiple times, yet he would overlook it. All he did was smile and tell them not to overdo it. It's not Kawana. This is someone else. We checked the rest of the teachers too, but never spotted Kawana-san. Mitsuru Kusumoto. This picture doesn't look like it was shot for a yearbook. Correct. He was most likely already in a coma when photo time rolled around. Mitsuru Kusumoto attempted suicide in September, so the other photos in here must have been taken after that. Actually, with that in mind, I can tell just how forced their smiles are in these pictures. Sawa sensei isn't smiling at all in this. Huh. She did mention she blew off her class reunion. In fact, she hadn't kept in touch with her classmates at all. No surprise there. Mitsuru-kun would be bound to come up at some point. This is Yui Suzuki. She's definitely one of the girls in the video. Yet another classmate involved with Mitsuru Kusumoto. Seems like a bunch of the students on this page were in the video, huh? Yeah, but... I can't find Shinya Kawai in here. Oh... Yeah, you're right. He's not in there. If I'm not mistaken, Kawai left the school once he started catching flack for being Mitsuru-kun's bully. At least, that's what I read online. No real evidence yet, but it definitely sounds like how it would have played out. But the truth is, there were more bullies who should have seen consequences besides Kawai. Let's look at this yearbook a bit more. Does anything stick out as strange? The homeroom teacher at this time just looked the other way, telling them not to overdo it. I know that, thanks to Sawa-sensei. The worst part is that his teacher knew. He even talked to the bullies about it. But all he said was, don't overdo it. But afterward, the public eviscerated him. He had to quit his teaching job. Hold on. If he was dismissed... You figure something out? The homeroom teacher at the time of the incident did take some flack. He got forced out of teaching. Yeah, what of it? If that's the case, couldn't this teacher in the yearbook just be filling in for the other one? I see. That definitely sounds likely. Let me search for the original teacher's name. There's a chance he won't be the same guy in the yearbook. Just give me a sec. Akaike, I met this guy in Ijincho. He said he was just scooping out Mikobisa's murder scene. Mikoshiba's murder scene. Maybe he he was actually there to help Ehara, just like Mamiya was. He could have been keeping tabs on me for sniffing around this case, or am I just being paranoid? What the? Mitsuru Kusumoto's photo was taken prior to the suicide attempt. He's been in a coma ever since then. Shinya Kawai's photo isn't here since he left the school so soon after the incident. Suspicious. That's Sawa Sensei. She mentioned being distraught over the Mitsuru Kusumoto situation. Yui Suzuki, now Mamiya, 
having married, as far as the video makes it seem, she's one of the aggressors. Hmm. Okay, and that's that. And that's that. Yagamishi, I found it. The name of Mitsuru Kusumoto's former homeroom teacher. You were right. It wasn't the same teacher in the yearbook. This one's name is Yu Kitakata. Kitakata? Kitakata. Huh? Hmm, now we have Don't our... His real name's Kitakata. Bring Kitakata. That's Kuwana's real name. Soma said it to me once. So, Kuwana-san was the original homeroom teacher? I just found a picture. This is Kitakata-sensei from 13 years ago. It's Kuwana. Yeah, it's him. That's him, all right. Yeah, definitely it's yeah. him. Not only that, Sawa Sensei was part of this class, which makes Kawana her homeroom teacher too. This is the link we've been looking for. Everything is clicked into place. Kawana san was the linchpin of this case. So, 13 years ago, Yu Kitakata left teaching behind after Mitsuru kun's incident and became Kawana the handyman. That's what made him turn to his uncle at Siren for help. He told me Kawana tried really hard to make it in the underground. Had some good reason for it. For living a life in the shadows? What could that have been? Kawana stopped teaching because a student of his attempted suicide. What was he after when he went underground? To become an underground big shot? To get revenge on the bullies? To be the world's greatest handyman? To get revenge, maybe? To get revenge on the bullies. Maybe Kawana blames the fact that he had to quit teaching on the bullies who caused it to happen. Then, maybe all his hatred got aimed at Shinya Kawai? Possible. He was abducted five years ago by individuals thought to be his acquaintances. <sighs> you think one of them was Kawana-san? I wouldn't rule it out. RK might have learned of Kawana's involvement while searching for Kawai. Maybe they came to a gene show so they could get details on the incident from him? Yes, that would explain RK's arrival in town as well. Hold up. Individuals who were his acquaintances? Meaning more people besides Kuwana-san, right? Could that mean... You got it. If they knew Kawai somehow, the evidence we've gathered so far should give us a clue. The evidence we've gathered so far should have clues on... Who knew Kawai? She? Our clue is right in here. It, it, it is? Cause I'm not seeing it. Maybe you want to go over that one again? Really? Okay, hold on. Let me take another crack at this. <laughs> I don't know what to choose. Or in here. Check this out. Ah. Uh -huh. The people in this were Kawai's acquaintances, right? Or Kawana's former students, in other words. Everyone, though? A few too many, don't you think? Hmm. You're probably right. Guess I should narrow them down. Oh, this. We already know this. Oh. The students in the video? Individuals acquainted with Kawai. They certainly fit the bill. But why would they wind up abducting him? Huh. Maybe Kawana asked for their help? No. He forced them to. What makes you say that? Well, Kawana had this on a secret flash drive, right? But to anyone in this video, it would be their worst nightmare for it to show up now. And if it did, It'd be busted as bullies who drove a high school kid to suicide. Yep, it'd be a real disaster for them if that got out. They'd probably be done for in the public eye. Which means this video is Kawana's leverage. It's how he got them to go after Kawai. <sighs> you think this is enough leverage to drive people to murder, though? Kawai was killed, right? RK is the only one saying Kawai was murdered. No body's been recovered yet, either. Okay, hang on. I'm barely keeping up with this. 
Yeah. It's a bunch of what-ifs stacked on top of each other. But there is somebody who could potentially confirm this. Who'd that be? Someone in the video. Mamiya, for example. I've met with her at her home. If she was involved with Kawai's abduction, she could probably tell us what we want to know. I agree. Yagami Shi's provided a working theory that ties together the Kamurocho and Ijincho incidents. So if we can get Yui Mamiya to corroborate this, we should be able to extract even more information from her. Perhaps even including Kawana-san's whereabouts. Yeah. Looks like he hasn't given us the slip just yet. Man, what the hell is that guy's deal? Mikoshiba and Sawa Sensei's murders, the Hara's alibi, Kawai's disappearance. Kawana's most likely tied to everything. We'll get all the answers we need if we can find him. And I guess this is bringing us that much closer? <laughs> Hopefully. I should go see Yui Mamiya tomorrow. You should accompany him, Sugiyoroshi. Considering we seem to be kicking the investigation into high gear, with Kaito-san out of commission, I'm sure Yagami-shi could use a helping hand. I'll be fine right here. Your call, Tsukumo-kun. I'm cool with whatever. Thanks for lending him out, Tsukumo. I'll make sure he comes back in one piece. Hey, hey. Don't underestimate him as a party member. He can hold his own if you let him. Details. Rest on the couch. You know how they say your life flashes before your eyes when you're dying? <laughs> that shit's real talk. I saw it all, huh? Yeah. There I am, bleeding out. And suddenly I'm getting the third degree from Matsugane-san. Back when I was still just a rookie. Captain Hamura stares me down like, time to lose that pinky. And then, Higashi starts crying for me. Oh, if I'm gonna go, I ought to get a better final scene than that shit, right? Right? I'm sure it'll be rosier when the time comes for real. Glad you pulled through, man. That bastard Soma, though. Next time, he's fucked. We could have avenged Sawa Sensei if it weren't for that stupid ambush. Well, you didn't tell the cops about him, did you? Had to give the cops a statement, so I did. With a generous side of bullshit. That'll get you busted, you know. I'm joking. All I said was the truth. That I got knifed by the same twisted fuck who got Sawa Sensei. In that case, it's only a matter of time until Soma's arrested. So for now, we'll go after Kawana, the piece that ties it all together. We just have to find him before RK does. Kawana, huh? He's on my shit list too, just so you know. Huh? Kawana must have had some sort of agenda back when he first met us. In fact, it's probably because you were looking into Mikoshiba. He palled around with me all because of that. I'm just a sucker of the agency, huh? I wouldn't say that. Still... The moment it asks for me to kick turns up, this is the shape I'm in. Just focus on getting better. Tsukuma will stop by later, too. What? Tsukiyura gonna give me the cold shoulder? He and I are off to question Mamiya. He said he'd drive us from Ijincho and everything. I should head back to Yokohama. I'm sure Sujira has the car ready by now.
So, we have to see Mamia? I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, let's go. Yep, let's go. All right, let's do this. If your theory is accurate, then Mamia was involved in both Kawai and Mikoshiba's murders. And even if that's off, we can at least learn more about Kawana-san as a teacher. And we are coming at night again. Yes? Hi, it's Yagami. I dropped by with Genda Law the other day. Not again. I have just a few more questions I'd like to ask you. You told me the last visit would be your only one. Seriously, why do you keep showing up here uninvited? Please, just leave me alone. I suppose I should mention, I'm here today as a detective, not a lawyer. So what? And my partner here is Sugiura. He's with an agency called Yokohama 99. Never heard of him. He's based in Ijinsho. He's working a case. Maybe you saw it on the news? The murder of Serio High Teacher Yokosawa, killed in her own apartment. You and Sawasan were classmates in high school, is that correct? After leaving Kurokawa 13 years ago, Sawasan moved to Ijinsho to teach. Uh, are you still there? What is it you want? I haven't seen Yoko-chan since graduation. Now go. You're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe you'll remember Kitakata-sensei then. I ran into him at Sawa-sensei's home right before the murder. He was your homeroom teacher at Kurokawa but resigned after the Mitsuru Kusamoto incident. Just like you, he appears to be connected to Sawasan. So why am I being singled out? Can't you just ask someone else? Believe me, it's a long list. But right now, we're here to find out how Sawasan got mixed up in all this. You two weren't necessarily on bad terms, were you? If I had to say, we weren't on the best terms either. Uh, how convenient. Because that's a perspective I'd like to hear more about as well. My husband will be home soon. Can you keep it quick? I'll give him my best shot. Exactly. Thanks for hearing us out. Hold on just a moment. Huh. I wonder what's going on. You don't think she bolted, do you? Mmm, wouldn't count on it. Should we ring again? She's taking her sweet time in there. Is she trying to figure out an escape plan or something? No. Sorry to keep you waiting. I just wanted to clean up a little. A little evidence or what? Is your son home today? He's at English school right now. I have to pick him up soon. Doesn't your husband help with any of that? You said he'd be home soon, right? Excuse me, but you are in no place to make those kinds of comments. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to pry. Well, what is it you want to ask? Where do I start? I have a ton of questions for her. But if I piss her off, we might get booted out of here with nothing to show for it. The groping was orchestrated right now. Have you seen Kitakata Sensei lately? Do you remember Mitsuru Kusumoto? Yes, we were classmates in high school. He jumped off the school's roof after his classmate Shinya Kawai bullied him. I hear he's still in a coma 13 years later. Weren't you going to ask me about Yokochan? I was, but there seemed to be an awful lot of Kurokawa graduates surrounding this case. And strangely enough, they were all in your class. Kitakata-sensei being the prime example, as well as a guy named Akaike-san. Remember him? Well, you're right. We were in the same class. And would you say you're all familiar with Mitsuru Kusumoto's situation? Yes, but... That's not a warm memory for any of us. I understand. Hmm. I'm sure it's not. 
All right, we are off to a decent start. I should keep it rolling and carefully build up to our point. Have you seen Kitakata Sensei lately? Have you been in contact with Kitakata Sensei lately? I haven't. He's someone I'd rather not have in my life. Are you surprised that he stayed in Ijincho after resigning from the school? No, not really. How about the fact that now he's using an alias? I had no clue. But again, he has nothing to do with me. None of this seems to face her. Maybe I should take it a step further. Ooh, yeah. The groping was orchestrated, right? Ooh. The groping was orchestrated, right? Excuse you? When Akihiro Ihara grabbed you on the train, you were in on that, weren't you? The whole thing was a conspiracy, staged to play out as it did. You need to leave. Right now. Dude, what gives? No one would even think to consider a predator and his victim could be accomplices. It's unheard of. But if it was to establish a murder alibi, that's another story, considering how much lighter the sentence is. That way, Ihara got away with killing Migoshiba, paying only a fraction of the price. But as luck would have it, proving it is going to require you to cooperate with us now. If you don't get up this second, I am calling the police! I mean it! It took me quite a long time to figure out how you and Ahara were connected. But once I learned Yokosawa attended Kurakawa, it all started falling into place. She was in your homeroom class. She looked after Toshio Ahara. She was the link to everyone. <sighs> but just before I could ask her about any of this, she was murdered by Kamrocho Gang. That same gang been hunting your old teacher, Kitakata Sensei. What is it you want from me? Mamiya san, do you have any idea where Kitakata Sensei could be? He may be Kawana the handyman, but he hasn't answered his work line since Sawasan's murder. I don't know. He was my teacher a decade ago. I barely remember his face. Well, I'm willing to wager Kitakata Sensei still remembers yours. I'll prove it right now. Oh, God. There's no way you, Kitakata alias Kuwana, had forgotten you, Mamiya's face. The proof of that is... Oh, man. Uh, should I show him, show her this? See for yourself. No. This was recorded at Kurakawa Academy 13 years ago. Feeling nostalgic yet? It was well hidden. Your Kitakata sensei had it on a USB drive. He really didn't want this thing being seen. The most interesting part is the date. It's the very same day Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped off the school roof. And hanging out in the back we see you, laughing and cheering right along with the other bullies. Guess it's safe to say it's a good thing your family wasn't home. Wouldn't exactly want them seeing this, would we? Has this video come up? Has Kitakata Sensei ever mentioned to you that he had it? Please. Please delete it. Considering the angle, I get the feeling that this was recorded in secret. And based on your reaction, did you even know it existed? You know what happened to Mitsuru-kun. He's been in a coma ever since what you did to him that day. But still, only one of you took the fall. Shinya Kawai took all the blame. Well, sort of, being that he got fired, Kitakata-sensei took heat too. Still, you all just moved right along with your lives. You've even got happy little families. What? Are you expecting someone? Amiya san? Well, I knew what happened someday. What do you mean?
Looks like she wanted some company. The Mask Man. Okay, that was easy. Well, this turned into a shit show. And would you look at that? Our old friend akaike san showed up to play a part. Yeah. Look who's here. The same guys. So you are all working together. The entire class. They're the jerks who hurt Tsukumo kun right? Break every finger on their hand, it still won't make you even. Come on, they may have more on the way. I have an old haunt in mind we move this to. And Mamiya-san's coming with. Huh? Let's not cause a scene, okay? I'd hate for a finger to slip and post this video. Yeah. Hey. Oh. You think this is your personal jail, Yagami? What makes you think you can keep bringing captives here? Well, it's the safest spot we know. Doesn't it feel good to be such a reliable friend? Yeah. Higashi, be cool. We won't be around long. Be cool. You think time's the issue? This is about respect, man. What's your call? We kicking him out? Oh, quick bit of news, Higashi-san. Kaito-san got shanked in Yokohama. What? What the fuck? Kaito Aniki? By who? You'll know once we're done explaining. Let me introduce you to Mamiya-san first. She called up her friends to come after us just a little bit ago. Yeah. And I'd do it again. I don't give a shit about that! What happened to Aniki? You better have paid him back already, Yagami. <sighs> Fuck those RK assholes! And how could Aniki have let him get to him like that? Now that Higashi-san's up to speed, should we get to it? I imagine Mamiya-san doesn't want to drag this out. What do you intend to do with me? First, you'll tell us everything you know. We'll decide how to deal with you afterward. <sighs> then let's get this over with. What do you want to know? <clears throat> let's start with the video. Any thoughts you'd care to share? I found it on a flash drive in Kitakata Sensei's room. Or should I say, Kiwana's. I take it that means he's the one who recorded it. Yes. That means Kawana already knew back then the rest of you were bullies too? Yes. If that's the case, then why was Shinya Kawai the only student thrown under the bus for it? Kawana-san didn't show that tape to anyone else? We had no idea we were even being taped. We didn't find out about the video, or the reason he sat on it so long until way after graduating. Why exactly did he sit on it for so long? Kitakata-sensei said he kept it so... ...so he could teach us for the rest of our lives. What? If that video came out at the time of the incident, I'm sure life would have been hard for us then. After all, Kawaii was exposed online, and that would mean millions of yen in compensation for damages. Yeah, but you guys could have wound up in the same boat. No. I mostly would have come across as dumb kids he roped into helping him. We might have caught some flack, but people would chalk it up to kids and their cliques and move on. But that's only how I would have gone if it had come out while we were still teenagers. You're saying circumstances are different now? I have a child now. A husband, an upscale apartment. If the world sees that tape now, I'll lose it all. And what do you think would happen to my son? 
the son of a woman who drove a kid to attempt suicide. His life would be ruined. That recording is more than kids being cruel. Mitsuru jumped from the school roof that very night and is still in a coma today. I get it. You have that much more to lose now than when you were a kid. So with this video as leverage, Kitagata sensei is continuing to teach his former pupils. Same for all my classmates. Kurokawa Academy is a prestigious school, after all. Most graduates go off to great universities and land high paying jobs. One started his own company. Others have families. And they're all in your position too, huh? If that video gets out, they lose everything. Exactly. Do you get it now? He waited for all of us to get what we wanted in life. Just so he could threaten to take it all away. And when that time came, he started contacting us. Every student you see in that video. When was the first time Kawana approached you? Five years ago. I was out on a walk with my son. When he came strolling up out of the blue. At first, I barely recognized him. His eyes were so hollow. Then, without so much as a word, he took out his phone and played that video. He's a psychopath! Well, all you kids tormenting Mitsuru looked pretty psychopathic to me. Oh, and you're so perfect. An angel who never once acted out of line, never lashed out at someone weaker than you, or sided with the group to shut someone out. Everyone does it! We were just lucky enough to have some creep tape. Picking on some kid who couldn't take it. Why does this have to happen to me? I'd say it's because bad things happen to bad people. You'll sling your barbs from a safe distance, but once you're on the other side of it, you curl up and play victim. Oh, I... You said it was five years ago that Kuana showed you the video? Reminds me of something Shirosaki Sensei was looking into. What? There was this guy. I think his name was Shinya Kawai. Something about him getting snatched off the streets about five years back. Who <gasps> wanna step back into Mamiya and the others' lives five years ago around when Kawai was abducted, which means. It was you guys. You're the ones who abducted him in Kamrocho and murdered him. No, it wasn't us. We could never do something like that. Wasn't us, huh? So you're not denying he was murdered after all? Who was it then? All Sensei told us was to find Kawai somewhere in Kamarocho, then bring him back with us, no matter what it took. Did Kawana tell you what he wanted with him? He needs to be there when you all beg for forgiveness. That's all he said. And if we refused, he'd leak the video. So we all went to see Kawai, but he wanted nothing to do with Sensei. Considering he'd cost him everything, that came as no surprise. But doing nothing would cost the rest of you everything too. Yes. So we had to force him into our van. After he put up a fight. Yeah, that lines up with what the local eyewitnesses said. So then what happened? Nobody's heard from the guy since. We were directed to bring him to a wharf in Yokohama. And that's where we begged for forgiveness. After that, he said we were free to go. All except Kawai. So you left him there alone with Kawana? We had to. The day after, I got a message on my phone from Sensei. What did it say? Nothing. There was only a video. It was of all of us. Pushing Kawai into the van. Turns out he recorded what we did in the city. You can see all our faces so clearly. How we covered Kawhi's mouth as he screamed for help. I... Even if you know all the backstory, the video is a clear-cut abduction. As I was watching it the first time, another message came in. This time, a picture. When I saw it, I just went cold. That's when I knew I would never be able to escape him. It was a picture of Kawai. Dead. 
Anyone who saw those messages would think we killed him after shoving him into the van. That's how he got his real leverage on his former students. Since then, we've been at his beck and call. No matter what he tells us to do, we wouldn't dare refuse him. He's giving you orders? That man! He forces us to help him with... He makes us accomplices to murder! Murder? They're being forced to help Kuala kill people? This case is finally cracking wide what open. The hell? Murder who exactly? Any bullies involved in suicides. That's who Sensei's got it in for. Anyone he could find across the country. He doesn't even care how old the case is. If a student commits suicide and bullying is suspected as the cause, he'll turn up. As far as I know, counting Kawaii. I think, I think he's killed at least seven people. Seven? Oh, man. How's he doing this? So his idea of justice is killing bullies across the entire country? He said that's the only way we can atone. Anyone who drives someone to suicide must always face justice. Until society comes to terms with this, he says we'll keep getting our hands dirty. That way... We might be able to save the next few Mitsurus before it's too late for them. <sighs> Not sure I should say this out loud, but I'm kind of rooting for this guy now. Mm, yeah, let's not. So was the murder of Hiro Mikashiba part of that agenda? We know Mikashiba drove Ihara-san to suicide four years prior. That has to be why Kawana let Ihara murder him, and how you found your role in establishing his alibi. Not just me. Grabbing Mikoshiba required a good number of people. All the people who pinned Ehara down. And even the ones who filmed it, they were working for Sensei. So that's how it went down. We had an unspoken agreement that we wouldn't directly take part in any killing. He just makes us his accomplices somehow. Like luring a target or digging a hole for a body. But the one thing we can't ever do is turn him down. If we do... He'll send his video of us abducting Kawhi to the police. And then Kawhi's body will turn up with our fingerprints all over his corpse. And we know that because... He's hidden Kawhi's corpse in a freezer somewhere. He's preserving one of his murder victims? So as long as he has that, you're wrapped around his finger. Mitsuru Kusumoto's case 13 years ago was the catalyst that drove Kuwana to executing bullies. Hiro Mikoshiba, who Ehara murdered, was just one of many, and behind him, Kuwana was pulling the strings all along. Sounds to me like Kuwana's had one thing on his mind for 13 years. Sitting on that video and becoming an Ijin Cho handyman was all in service of his real motive killing off bullies. He's dragged all his former students into this hell. Until the day it destroys every single one of you. Is today that day? We'll see. I'm still curious about a few things, though, if you don't mind. What? There were these scumbags chasing down Kiwana called RK. What part did they play? Strangely enough, they never came up once during your confession. So tell me, why'd they come for Yokosawa? That I don't know for certain. But Sensei did reach out to Yokochan about six months ago over the phone. He was asking her about the suicide at Serio High. The suicide at Serio High? You must be talking about Toshiro Ehara. The lawsuit played out like no bullying took place, right? That the school wasn't responsible. But Yokochan was a teacher there, and Sensei was able to get the truth out of her. How did he do that? What did he say? From Yoko-chan's perspective, she and Sensei were both just teachers dealing with students attempting suicide. I think that's why she let her guard down and told them everything. After learning the truth, Sensei believed Mikoshiba needed to be held accountable. So if Sawa-sensei hadn't talked to him, Ahara wouldn't have gotten involved? And none of this would be happening in Ijincho? Possibly. No, this isn't right. Sawa sensei didn't know Kawana's identity or his objectives. She thought she was just talking through her problems with a sympathetic ex teacher. At the very least, she sure as hell didn't deserve to die for that. 
It's not like we're the ones who did it. Who is it? Block number. Hello? Yo, know who this is, Yagami? Kuwana? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're looking for me. Where are you? I'm willing to meet you now, if you come alone. But you have to let Mamiya go in exchange. What? All right. She's free as soon as I see you. Works for me. Then come on down to your office. I thought I'd let myself in. What? <laughs> Gotta say, this chair's pretty comfy. Pretty sure I locked up behind me when I left. Listen, I'll only meet you alone. No one else. And don't make me wait long, or I could change my mind. You told me to meet him alone. You can let Mamiya-san go once I confirm he's there. You gonna be alright by yourself? Well, he already knows Mamiya-san's with us. I'm guessing he was watching us from somewhere. And I can't afford to do anything that would piss him off enough to make him disappear. Uh, got it. Oh. We'll take care of this end of it. Shouldn't you move your ass? You. Okay. I've unlocked a new skill. Let's increase the maximum health. Snake. Attack damage. Definitely. More attack damage. Okay. Oh, just a second. <laughs> Could this me? Can you get out? It's not inside here. Tough to hear. Oh, there is music. Can't make it out. Okay.
Now let's see. He's right there. Hope you don't mind, I let myself in. Now are you gonna hold up your end and release you, Imamiya? Come on. You and I can either try to make this work, or neither of us is gonna get what we want. So, you gonna make the call or what? Hello? Yagami-san? I'm with Kawana. You can let Mamiya-san go. Got it. Will do. Sorry about all this, Yagami. Why don't you sit down? Maybe it's time you and I had a heart-to-heart. -heart. How's Kaito holding up? <sighs> Kaito-san's recovering in the hospital. For now. Sawa-sensei is another story, though. I can hardly believe it. She was the last person I wanted to get mixed up in all this shit. If that's the case, why were you already waiting in her apartment? RK's top men were lying in wait over there to get their hands on you. So why was she the one lying on the ground? Answer me, Kawana. Was it because of you? Would you feel better if it was? How dare you? You're thinking that if you hadn't stuck your nose in her affairs, she might be at home grading her papers right now. You tell me. Is that what's eating away at you right now? Because if it is, you're mistaken. That guilt is mine alone to bear. It's my burden to carry. When I saw in the news that she had been murdered in cold blood, it felt like the whole world had stopped spinning to me. I would take it all back right now if I could. But unfortunately, to fix this I'd need to turn the clock back further than you'd think. You mean back to when you were a school teacher? Yeah, basically. Back to when I still had a little faith in humanity. Seeing someone's life get cut short, you never really bounce back from it, do you? But I don't have to tell you that. I did my homework on you, Yagami. It seems you were a fairly accomplished lawyer. You even scored a murder acquittal. But we both know how that ended. The death of an innocent young woman. You and I are the same. We both have scars. And they're the type of scars that never fully heal. Yeah. Maybe you're right. But for Sawakun, it was 13 years ago. The very day before Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped, she stopped me in the hall so she could tell me about how serious the bullying really was. Up until that day, I just assumed it was boys being boys, teasing. I figured it was harmless, that they'd get bored with it, and then they'd move on. I mean, come on. Kawaii had to have been twice the size of Mitsuru. It's not like I'd seen any fighting. So I warned him not to overdo it. And eventually he would take the hint. Well, according to what I was told, you smirked, actually. Yeah. I guess that's what I did. I was too late. Sawakun had to point it out. Sensei. How could you be so blind, she asked. Her eyes were this piercing mix of pity and scorn. According to what she told me, nearly half the class was bullying Mitsuru. She said she'd seen him at the station. She made it sound like he had half a mind to jump onto the tracks right then and there. I'm not so presumptuous anymore. But back then, I used to think my students were my biggest fans. I thought I'd won their hearts and minds. But the look on Sawakun's face that day made me see the truth. I couldn't just go on smiling like nothing happened. So I decided to do my homework. The next day, I put a hidden camera in the classroom after school. 
So that's how he got the bowling video. He had he had set it up himself to record the room remotely. So you admit that you're the one who recorded that video? Yeah. You saw it, right? Talk about the ugly side of kids. Hard to watch, wasn't it? Unfortunately, by the time I picked up the camera and saw what it recorded, Mitsuru had made his jump. I missed him by a few crucial moments. What happened in that classroom was the final straw. Later on, all the bullies were asked what happened. Each and every one of them lied. Kawai started it. It wasn't our idea, they said. To anyone outside of it, all they'd seen was Kawai forcing Mitsuru to do his bidding. So the people held culpable were Kawai and myself. The callous homeroom teacher who deliberately turned a blind eye. That was the day I began living my life with real purpose. So you couldn't forgive your students who got away with bullying. You went so far, you put aside your own life to make sure they atoned somehow. That's right. Mitsuru Kusumoto's still a vegetable. He's as good as dead. But I don't care. We have no right to forget about him. You say that, even though Sawa-sensei ended up paying for it. <laughs> I'll ask you again. Why were you at her apartment the other day? Don't dodge the question this time. I wouldn't say I dodged it. But I suppose I should explain from the beginning. Four years ago, there was a suicide at Sawakun's school. It was her own student this time. You know this, right? A student at Seiryo High School? Toshiro Ehara. Yeah. When she was in court, Sawakun had no choice but to say there wasn't any bullying. Soon as she told me that, I knew Hiro Mikoshiba would be my next target. Of course, she had no idea about any of that. When Sawakun learned Mikoshiba had been murdered, though, she reached out to me herself. What did she want? She had a sneaking suspicion that I was involved in his death. She called me a few times, prodding carefully for answers. <laughs> Quite the perceptive lady, really. And? What kind of answers did you give her? I denied any knowledge of it. But at one point, she mentioned something kind of odd. That there was a detective at the school already investigating the incident. Huh? She meant you, of course. A detective already knee-deep into the case, despite the police barely even knowing about Mikoshiba. So Sawasensei was the one who told Kuwana's I show up at her school. The police are a pain in the ass. But when an out-of-town detective comes sniffing around, that's bad. I knew I had to act fast to get you off the trail. Although, Sawakun was a problem too. I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. And then what? First I found out where the two of you would be meeting up. At that little cafe. Then I hired the Leo Mock to step in. <laughs> but you put up one hell of a fight. They had strength in numbers, but you would have taken out the whole group if I hadn't stepped in. Nonetheless, my other message went through. At the same time, Sawakun was handed a photo of Mikoshiba's final moments. I left that task to someone you know. Yui Mamiya. They hadn't seen oh. each other in 13 years. Sawakun had no idea. Oh my god. The lady in the sunglasses. Yui Mamiya was involved in that too? Oh my god. Everything I did that night was intended as a warning to Sawakun. Although, I guess I didn't have to be so extreme about it. Yeah. Sawa sensei was too smart. She must have started suspecting that you'd had something to do with Mikoshiba's murder. After all, who else could have known we'd be meeting at that cafe? She'd have traced it right back to you. 
Even if Sawakun had started to suspect me, I knew she wouldn't sell me out to the cops. We're too alike. The both of us lost students to suicide on our watch. That said, I couldn't bear the thought of dragging her down into the mess I started, so I scared her off, and I thought she would stay away. <laughs> the day she was killed, she called to ask if we could speak in person. I could tell something was wrong. She was on the verge of tears the whole call. Then she broke down. I asked her why, of course, but she wouldn't give me a straight answer no matter how I tried to phrase the question. So then what? Did you just waltz on over there? It doesn't seem like you. Watch it. You don't know me well enough to say that. Maybe. But I assume you had some sort of plan going in. Were you gonna confess to her? Here's the thing. If she'd figured out that I was behind Mikoshiba, and it didn't sit well with her, I would have told her every last detail. Sawakun, no. I think she would have understood me. Or at least that's what I had believed. In hindsight, I think she was forced to make that call. Under normal circumstances, I'm sure she'd have rather washed her hands of me. Hard as it is to hear, I think she called me under duress. RK probably had her hostage. That would explain the vague responses. That's probably why her voice was trembling. It's tragic. You mean it was RK? Why do they want you so badly anyway? I don't know. What? If I knew their angle, I'd be doing more than just scurrying around. You serious? Believe me, I'm just as clueless as you are, much as I hate to admit it. Honest. I'm not thrilled that a small army wants my head on a platter. Have you noticed? How our case seems to show up at the worst possible times? Someone must be pulling their strings. Then we're on the same page. At least we agree on something. <laughs> Just a sec. Yeah. I'm still over here with Yagami-san. You're not being tailed by any of his guys, are you? Okay. Then I'll meet you right now. That was Mami Akun. She said she's free. You guys have been true to your word. Tell Sugiura Kun that I said thank you. Now you want to go? We still have some business to settle here. Now remember, I'm the handyman here. Let me do the dirty work. I don't know what else to tell you. But you need to get out. While well, you still can. If you disappear into the night, I don't want to go busting my ass just to find you again. Before you leave, I'll need some contact info. A phone number would be nice. Oh, no need for that. As far as I'm concerned, this is goodbye. I wouldn't count on that. Hold up! You don't give up!
go. Kawana! You guys again. You really need the masks? Come on, Kurokawa kids. You heard that, right? The detective here already knows everything. Kawana! What are you going to do now? What do you think happens when he spills everything? Sounds like your lives are over, unless you shut him up. But Sensei, you'll finish the job for us, right? Huh? Is that you, Akaike? Oh, he's even got a name to your voice. But... Answer me, Sensei! I know, I know. I'll be the one to finish it. You just knock him out. Okay, then. Time to learn your lesson! Come on. What kind of lesson is this? Just stay there. Kawana! Oh no, Kawana! See you to stick around, Bamiya-san. <gasps> well, since Kuana couldn't stay, sounds like you're not out of the woods just yet, huh? <laughs> and we are going to chapter ten. Thirteen years in the past, Mitsuru Kusimoto plunged himself into a coma, sealing his fate alongside Kuana's. Ridden by guilt, Kuana sets off on a path of vengeance, and the bullies he drags with him are shackled to the shadows. However, Yokosawa's murder serves as a deadly wake-up call to what he's done. Catch a Tiger, Chapter 10. Yeah. Man, I'm already seven hours on the stream. I think I'm going to end here. Getting your identification on record, so you won't be a threat to us anymore? Uh, what? And I think you owe us after everything you've done. Expect me to come collect one of these days. <sighs> your carriage awaits, Mamiya-san. 
Don't tell me we're going back to that dingy arcade. <laughs> we sure are. But try not to hold a grudge. It wasn't us who abandoned you. Hmm. <laughs> Higashi, you already called Sari-san and the gang, right? Yeah. I let them know what's up. They said they'll head over when they're ready. Did Shirosaki-sensei say anything? <laughs> well, she was pretty stunned when I told her who Kuana really is and what he's up to. Sounding a little smug there, Higashi-san. Taking credit for the detective work you didn't even do? Back me up here, Yagami-san. <sighs> Whatever, man. Kuana got away and that's all that matters. Still, the task in front of us is finishing Sari-san's case. We have to clear up Ahara's crime once and for all. With Mamiya-san's help, of course. <sighs> Finally, I'm ready to get some answers. Yep. Well, we still got time till Shirosaki Sensei gets here. Why don't you take a breather, Yagami san? Huh? That'd be okay? Sure. I'll call you once everyone's here. Yeah. A break sounds good. By the way, Higashi, has anything unusual gone down in Kamrat Show lately? Anything involving RK? Yeah, about that. My guys are saying things have been a little too quiet since yesterday. Soma and Akutsu are out in Ijincho too. When they come back, they're in for a rude awakening. And they can pay for what they did to Kaito Aniki. Make them pay? Aren't your Yakuza days behind you now? That's not the Yakuza in me talking. That's just a problem I'm gonna be the solution for. Uh, isn't yeah. that exactly what a Yakuza would say? Fine. <laughs> Think of it as getting revenge for a brother. Uh... I'm doing the right thing, dammit! Yeah, maybe it's just how you're putting it. Besides, what's the matter if I was Yakuza? I've got my own code, and I'm gonna do right by me. Whatever you say. Much as things change, they stay the same. Since I'm out, might as well check on how the city is doing. I'll go kill some time somewhere. Okay. And I'm going to do that too. Okay. Almost seven hours. So, we are almost 